my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and if you're new here, hey, welcome. And if you're back, of course, welcome back. Today, I am here with another installment in my month in review series, which is where just at the end of each month, I'm taking a little bit of time to share the finishes that I've finished, <laughs> the projects that I've finished, and the whips that I have going into the following month, and to touch on just a few different like milestones and exciting things have happened, and take a little look at the month ahead and what I have planned. So this is for the month of July 2021, and to be totally honest with you, summer has looked a little bit different than I expected. Um, I've had a lot going on in my personal life, and then also just with having the kids around a little bit more, even though they had summer school for part of it, I just, filming and, <laughs> filming and diamond painting itself has just looked a little bit different. So um, let me go ahead and share some of the things that I did accomplish this month though. So I finished two diamond paintings and one of which was pretty large and I'm going into the month of August with three whips, two of which are part of a really long, long-term ongoing project that I'm working on. Um, in the month of July, I put up, <laughs> a number of videos that I completely forgot to check on before I started filming, but I'm averaging between 15 and 20 videos each month. And I think I was close to that though. I did take a week off sort of unexpectedly in there. So probably around 15 videos ish. <laughs> and that's before I take into account my Patreon vlogs, which yes, by the way, I do have a Patreon. It's the beginning of the month as of the time of this filming. So if you are interested in seeing more behind the scenes, including weekly vlogs of things that are going on in my personal life outside of diamond painting and all things diamond painting related, maybe you're interested in an exclusive monthly live with me. I had a really, really fun one with my patrons just a week ago. Um, check out the link in the description to my Patreon. No obligation whatsoever, but I know some people really like to see behind the scenes and get to be a part of a little bit closer knit, intimate, small community. So I invite you to be a part of that if that sounds something like something you're interested in. So along with videos, um, I participated in a couple of events this month. I participated in Punked Out Diamonds, which is hosted by Knox over at Punks and Crafts. I participated in the Fun Never Ends Diamond Paint Along hosted by Rachel Ray and Mrs. Crochet and Coffee. And then I squeezed in a project that I actually also finished for the JBG Along, which is the Jasmine Beckett Griffith event put on by emeralds and fairy lights and crafting with Shay. I'll show you those projects here in just a moment. In other event news, as far as things that I'm hosting or more directly involved in, the Summer with the Masters event is still going on and I've been working on a project for that event and put up a bonus video or two during the month of July, just to keep that event fresh in your mind. It ends in the middle of August though, so the end is in sight. And then finally, I, um, announced Drills and Chills. <laughs> Just a couple weeks ago, I announced that I will be co-hosting Drills and Chills this year. So yay, lots of fun event things. All right, let me get into showing you my finishes for the month of July. So first, this was a kit that I worked on as part of both the punks, the punked, in, punked out diamonds event, as well as the Fun Never Ends Diamond Paint Along. Now, I'm not generally familiar with the punk genre, but Knox said that this kit does fall within the punk genre. So yay. And this of course fell within the theme of the Fun Never Ends Diamond Paint Along because that just required that you worked on a piece with rainbow colors or one of the other LGBT QIA plus flags. And this was entitled Pride. <laughs> and so I started this in the month of June, kind of in honor of Pride Month and to be a part of these events. And I did complete it in the month of July. Now, I know a couple of you asked in my last video because you noticed that I did have this rolled up with the diamonds facing in. And you pointed that out to me. And this is gonna be one of those like, please do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes, especially with round drill kits and high quality kits like Diamond Art Clubs, 
sometimes I just, I don't know. I want to roll it with the diamonds facing in and I know that I'm not supposed to and I always tell everyone, if you roll up your canvases, roll them with the diamonds facing out so they don't scratch or move out of place or whatever. I don't know, you guys. <laughs> feel free to judge me but I don't I try not to do that with square kits which is really funny because when you see one of my whips it is a square kit and it is rolled up with the drills facing in but okay again do as I say and not as I do please so I'm actually going to be doing a full post review on this piece uh, in a whole separate video so I won't go into all of the details here but I added a ton of enhancements to this piece like oops a ton and I'm not like I said I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it here because I'm gonna put up that full post review explaining my whole process but I swapped out all of these colors that in turn come off as this like kind of mist these are all ABs every single one of them <laughs> in her hair I added ABs for highlights and then as well I actually added in some white ABs on the edges of the scales of the dragon, which was to me inspired by the Randall Spangler kits that Diamond Art Club does and how they typically chart green ABs in those dragon scales. So I added lots of bling and I love how it turned out so much because this originally only came with two ABs and two charted ABs and I felt like a piece as glorious and beautiful as this absolutely called for way more sparkle than that. And if you know me at all and have seen previous like post reviews and whatnot, or just heard me comment on, I generally don't like adding enhancements because it takes too much brain power for me. I just, I wanna be able to sort of zone out while I'm diamond painting. But in a piece like this, I thought I just, it needs more bling in order to even have it done justice. So I will go into all kinds of detail in the post review video, but I am so happy with how this turned out. This was a beautiful kit to work on. This was one of the kits in my stash that I refer to as a rainy day kit. And I have a few of these in my stash where I adore the kits with my whole heart, usually because of the artwork itself or because it has some other sort of sentimental meaning to me. And there's, there are those kinds of kits those rainy day kits are ones that i am saving and savoring to work on um so this is one of those kits that i was like it really needs to be meaningful and special and I, when i need something to cheer me up on a rainy day that's when i'm going to pull out these kits and this was exactly what i needed it was like good for my soul i just loved every single second of working on this piece and i'm sad that it's over diamond art club you absolutely knocked it out of the park with how you rendered this piece i did not mention this is a jojo's art piece and isn't it just incredible you guys i can't get over it anyway that is pride now let me shift this off to the side just really briefly and i know when i go to actually put this away in the box for longer term storage because this has just been rolled loosely in temporary storage for the moment. Um, I will roll it with the drill side out. So my second finish of the month, which I showed on my Instagram, but I won't be doing a full post review on this one. This is Clockwork Dragonling, also a Diamond Art Club kit. So this was, I suppose, a very Diamond Art Club heavy month. I'm not complaining. This piece was a little bit smaller. It was 51 by 69 centimeters. Again, the name of this one is Clockwork Dragonling. It's from the artist Jasmine Beckett Griffith. And I worked on this piece as part of the JBG along. And um, it just so happened to work out timing wise that I didn't have any other Jasmine Beckett Griffith kits in my stash because to be completely honest with you, her art style is not typically my personal style as far as what I would want to diamond paint, but I still really, really badly wanted to support Lindsay and Shay in their event. So when Diamond Art Club released this kit in mid-July and it was in stock um, as opposed to a pre-order, I thought, ooh, I'm going to order that. And if it comes in on time, I'm totally going to work on it for their event. And I, of course, I love this one, especially because of 
I love the overall steampunk vibe. I think the way that her outfit is rendered and her wings are incredible. And the dragon, like the clockwork dragon, I am obsessed with. Naturally, it's only like mm, less than a tenth of the whole kit, but I did save this section for last just so I could savor it. This piece has four ABs in it because Diamond Art Club is seriously stepping up their AB game lately. And this piece had a whopping 65 colors. Again, I'm noticing that Diamond Art Club is ramping up the number of colors that they're averaging in their kits. It used to be like below 50 consistently, and now most of the kits I've gotten from them lately have been in the 60s as far as number of colors go. And even though this is not a massive piece, like that's a lot of color, but I definitely think that it still has Diamond Art Club's distinct crisp and clean rendering style where you can really tell what all the details are. Um, I really love, there's a couple of different ABs or a few actually, I think there's three. There's the pale yellow, this blue, and this green in her goggles. And I think the effect is really, really incredibly beautiful. The wings, I'm obsessed with how those are rendered. They're gorgeous. And of course the dragon. Now this grass, this whole bottom section down here, are we in frame? Yeah. This was pure confetti. <laughs> this was the last row that I worked on and this took me so much longer to complete, particularly compared to the top of the kit, which is pure color blocking. Um, this went crazy fast, like less than a day easily. Um, by the way, if you're curious, the washi tape border on this kit, as well as the one on Pride is from Simply Gilded. Most, if not all of my washi tape borders are Simply Gilded because it's such a high quality and doesn't peel back as easily as some other brands. Anyway, I was so happy that I decided to pick up this kit. I actually enjoyed working on this art style. I'm not sure if I'll reach for another Jasmine Beckett Griffith piece again, but I loved working on this and supporting my friends' events. So those were my two finishes for the month. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull out my whips for the month. So let me set this to the side. And the first of the three whips that I have going into the month of August, this is probably the longest it feels like that I've ever had a whip going. Maybe it's because I'm not quite enjoying working on this piece, piece as much as I hoped that I would, but it's on me. Um, so this is actually a custom that Crafties sent to me for review because I am a Crafties affiliate and discount code and affiliate link in the comments if you wanna check them out, I do recommend them. Um, they have a lot of licensed, they have licensed diamond painting kits and then they also offer customs. So they offered to do a custom for me for the Summer with the Masters event and I kind of poked around a little bit and chose to send them this piece. This piece is titled Our Lady of Cal Parsley, yes. I know, every single time I say, yes, the name sounds really ridiculous, but that's what it is. The artist is a female French artist named Elizabeth Sonrell, and I just really loved the idea of working on a piece from a female artist. Um, I'm actually really, really happy with so much about this kit. I think the rendering is turning out really well, and faces are difficult to render, really. Um, I, the drill quality is really good except for one color that I'm assuming it's really just a bad batch because so much of the rest of the colors are fantastic. Um, the glue quality and the symbol clarity is there, <laughs> you know, and so I think it's just, maybe I'm a little bit bored of the colors. It's quite confetti heavy. It has 43 colors and this is a 40 by 50 piece and square drills because I wanted to get like that extra detail, especially when I'm doing faces. I like to get square drills if I can because I think that it, I just think it helps faces look a little less um, pixely, I suppose. I don't know what it is. I just tend to prefer square drills when I'm doing faces. Now, just to be totally honest, so I'm filming this, it's actually the evening of August 2nd and I've been working super hard on this piece the past couple of days. So if in the interest of full transparency, not that you're holding it against me because it's still not finished, but so I had this divided into columns this way and I probably ended the month partway through this column. So like at least these three sections, if not four, um, 
I did not have completed at the end of July. I don't know why I felt like I had to tell you that, but I do. Now, if you notice, the washi tape borders are peeling up, but that's because I have been so hard on this canvas, like tossing it every which way. It's had stuff pushing against it and sitting on top of it. And I've also had this whip going since, did I start it in May or June? I don't know. It's been ongoing and I'm going to finish it in the next couple of days because I just want to be done with it and have it be part of my... Um, I think I'll incorporate it into my wrap up video for Summer with the Masters, like the grand finale as our event ends on August 14th. But yes, so this is a custom. I'm really happy with the overall quality, especially for the size. I think Crafties did a really nice job with it. I just think maybe the art style has been a little more tedious for me to work on, um, but I really am enjoying seeing it come together. I'm gonna move this to the side and I have sort of a two-part <laughs> whip uh, that I'm gonna pull out and show you guys. All right, so going into the month of August, I still have gone on going this rather epic scale comparison project. If you're newer to my channel, you may or may not be aware that I have taken on the really exciting for me, but like I said, very long-term and epic level project of completing two different companies' versions of the same piece of art. So this is the Diamond Art Club version of Spirit of Flight by the artist Josephine Wall. Josephine Wall has a really distinct rendering style and Spirit of Flight is one of her signature pieces that she tends to be very well known for. So both of these kits are very large. The Diamond Art Club version is 100, let me see it says down here, 105 by 70 centimeters, square drills, 66 colors. Now I do have a playlist of this comparison series that I'm doing because what I have done is split each canvas up into eight columns and I'm completing each column side by side in each kit and then doing a comparison video and sharing it with you guys. I'll be sure to link to that playlist below. I'd love for you to go and check it out. Very, very soon, I'm going to be posting an update of, we're at the halfway point. I have completed four columns in each of these kits actually five in the other version, but four columns in the Diamond Art Club version. So this is the most recently completed column. I completed this, this is my fourth column, like right right here, down this, you know, kind of halfway through this. And the way that I've been working on this is, you know, you may have seen this before if you've been around, but I worked on two columns over on the right-hand side, decided to save her face for, la face for last, hopped over to the left-hand side, and we're working our way back to her face. So I filmed the comparison video um, of the fourth column and just touching base generally on what it's like to be halfway done with this project. So look for that video really, really soon. I'd love for you to get to see that. But yes, I am, gosh, I'm loving this project. <laughs> but I have to I have to pace myself really because it's, it's a lot. <laughs> Now I'm going to move this to the side and you guys are going to get a little sneak peek here, I suppose, of that comparison video. But underneath here, I have the Diamond Painting Deutschland version of this kit. So I'm not going to let you look for too long because I really want to save it. <laughs> but this is the Diamond Painting Deutschland version of this kit. And you could tell already that it is extremely different from the Diamond Art Club version. For one, the size is just slightly different. This one is 100 by 75 centimeters. It is on double-sided adhesive, if you didn't guess as much from the, the um, white cover on it, whereas Diamond Art Club is poured glue. And perhaps the most stark difference between the two, though, is that Diamond Art Club, as I mentioned, has 66 colors. Diamond Painting Deutschland has 275. <laughs> so it's a very different, rendering style and approach, but I don't think that one is necessarily better than the other. You'll hear me say in all of those comparison videos that my goal with this project is not to pit the companies against one another or to say, to determine which of these companies is quote, best, but more just to highlight what their strengths are and what you can expect if you were to order a kit from one of these companies. Hopefully this will just give you a sense of 
what their rendering style is really and their approach to color and their approach to handling artwork like Josephine Walls. So in the Diamond Painting Deutschland version, I have actually finished the fifth column as well. I haven't had the chance to work on the fifth column of the Diamond Art Club version yet. That's okay. I really wanted to finish my other old master's kit and then I will be back to this project. But it's exciting to be well over halfway done with this one because it is absolutely crazy confetti. Each of the sections in this piece takes me three to four times as long to complete as the equivalent section in the Diamond Art Club version. But I'm loving this project. I hope you guys are too. But I'm sure you can understand now why this has been an ongoing like whip going into the next month. Because <laughs> I think I started these in May. I think it was in May. It might have been April. <laughs> I don't remember at this point. I have it noted somewhere. But anyway, those are the whips that I have going into the month of August. Now, what do I have planned for the month of August? Um, I may be a little bit lighter on videos this month. We are heading on a family vacation here in just a week. And while I'm gonna try to have some videos scheduled to go up while I'm gone, I'm also not gonna push myself. Like, I'm a little stressed about traveling with two little ones, including a three-year-old that's a runner and doesn't really love wearing his mask. So content may be a little bit light, but I'll try to keep you guys posted in the community tab just as you know that goes on. I'm also gonna be wrapping up Summer with the Masters. August 14th, there's still time to submit your project. You do not have to finish. You just have to have started. And I'm gonna be doing lots of prep leading up to Drills and Chills, which kicks off on September 1st. I'm co-hosting that with Jessica over at Tiny Worlds of Wonder. Apparently we just can't get enough of hosting events with one another, so we're doing drills and chills together. Along with this, I, you know, I really want to put some good time into these Josephine Wall projects. I had in my head that maybe I could finish this these projects by the end of August. Now I am less certain that I, I even want to try to push myself to do that. Um, it, it's a possibility I would finish by the end of August, but I don't really see that happening at this point between vacation and having some family in town at the end of the month, but we'll just take it one step at a time. <laughs> it also will depend on if I'm in the mood to work on these because I don't want to burn out, which is something I was just about to do last month at one point. Um, I'm not entirely sure what kind of project I want to work on after I finish my crafties custom. I think I'll probably reach for a round drill kit, maybe something from Diamond Shop, maybe... Um, I don't know, I have a lot in my stash and I have a couple of kits I still need to unbox, but maybe even like one of my new Craftably kits. We'll see, um, I'm just gonna follow my nose or rather scroll through my gems flow and see what jumps out at me. But I've been doing a lot of diamond art clubs and thought that maybe I should give some love to another company um, this month. Maybe I'll look at my Distracted by Diamonds kits, that could be fun. Anyway, that about wraps it up as far as what I have in mind for the month of August. I really, really enjoyed sharing my month in review of the month of July. I loved getting to share some of my finished projects and some of my whips and just talk a little bit about what's going on on the channel and what I have coming up. But feel free to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what did July look like for you? Did you hit any exciting milestones? Did you complete any diamond painting projects? What were some of your favorite things about the month? Or did you just kick back and enjoy your summer <laughs> and take a big break from diamond painting, which is totally fine. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up before you click away. And if you're not already subscribed and would like to see more diamond painting content from me, including following along with these this comparison project and events like drills and chills and whatnot, please hit the subscribe button and you can also hit the bell to be notified when I share new videos or go live, which I do want to do that this month sometime as well. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.